Hi, this is Uri Joash with DIYPhotography.net. I'm right here in London in Color Pro Award 2022, hosted by ViewSonic, with Kevin Chang, Marketing Director for ViewSonic UK. And uh, Kevin, I have a question. Yes. Uh, I've been using my store-bought monitor for a long time, and it's just a regular monitor. I, I, I feel like I want to go pro. Mm -hmm. um, what should I look for in a, mon in a pro monitor? Well, I think you have to look for the, uh, the color gamut, the range, uh, the backlights, uh, the sensors, um, the resolution of the play. Uh, I do work with white motion graphics, uh, refresh rate, I think that's quite important. So if you're editing videos, um, high refresh rate will give you a smoother kind of um, experience. Or let, let's break it down for a bit. What is the right range for uh, a refresh rate? Like what numbers should I look for yeah. if I'm doing uh, high-end video or motion graphics? So um, typical monitor is about 16 hertz uh, refresh rate. So I think if you look working with like videography, right, I think you should look for anything that's over 100 uh, hertz. Um, so yeah. Oh, that, that sounds familiar from gaming, right? Yes. So yeah, it's, it's similar. Because when you're editing videos, right, you have to play it back, right? Of course, when the higher refresh rate, you get a smoother playback and you can see it more accurately when actually someone using a high refresh rate monitor will see. And then you've mentioned color gamut. So what is color gamut and what color gamut should I be looking for? So depending on what kind of color space you're working with, we've got the RGB, which some of my monitors are 100%, and then you've got like the, um, the also the, the, the printed monitor of the monitors, so that it's got like a Pantone range of colors that we can use, and it's the, 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 the normal RGB as well. So Pantone would be from working with print, right? If at the end of my workflow I'm printing something, mm -hmm. What do I do if I'm working with video? What what's the what's the magic term that I should look for? I don't be RGB. I don't be RGB. Last thing that you mentioned is resolution. So I was wondering what what's the resolution that I want to go for today? Everyone's working like at least called came out. This is kind of standard. Although although some of the content isn't 4K yet, but people would like to future proof their content. So to go out like even whatever they shoot, right? Even when the outcome finally is. 4HD, right? They'll still do it in 4K and they can downscale it. Okay. So I understand what kind of features I should looking for. Um, does it matter if I'm working in a dark environment or in a bright environment? If I have a dedicated editing room or how, what should I look for in, in that sense? Well, that will be brightness and whether they'll have like an hood included. So if there's any ambient or direct sunlight, that will help you out as well with an extra put. But like, I think modern days monitor, they're bright enough to um, be okay with any type of ambient line. And the, the last thing that I want to ask about, and I know this is a differentiating factor between pro monitors and regular monitor, is color accuracy. What is the magic term or specification that I should look for if I want my monitor to be color accurate? Well, I think, yeah, like what I said, like um, the, the color garment, the color range that it covers and how accurate is it in terms of the output, right? So when you design something, when it looks similar with other kind of output source, say prints or any other like similar uh, high-end monitors as well. So that you need to get the best out. So let's say I'm just starting out. Um, um, I want to buy my first professional monitor. I'm done with those, you know, $75 monitors. I'm yeah. done with it. Yeah. I want to go pro. What does ViewSonic has to offer for me, let's say, if I'm editing video? Yeah, then I think the ViewSonic Color Pro 76 series would be perfect for you because of the high refresh rate of 165 hertz. Uh, still very color accurate and it's just you'll have a very smooth playback when you're editing your videos or animations. And how, how big is this monitor, let's say, for? Three hundred, four hundred dollars. Oh, for that's an inch. Oh, that that that's fairly good. Yeah. And what about if I'm doing steels or you know the design? Is that the same monitor, or would I be looking for a different monitor? Then working more on the still uh, images or photography, we recommend the um, eighty six series, uh, which is four K and has a better um, color gamut. So I saw a, a black wheel thingy, maybe kind of. I'm not sure if it's a mouth. I know it relates to color, uh, the calibration. Yeah. What, what does the thing do? So we call it the color, uh, sorry, color pro wheel. Um, so it's a new feature with our color deal pro pro range. So uh, you use it as an OSD where you can control the settings of your monitor without having to like fiddle around at the back of the So you never see what's on the other side. Right? So this was a very uh, user friendly interface and it's very easy to use. But also it's also a color calibrator as well. So you just put it at the back and there's a software that runs it that with a kick of the button, you can always calibrate your uh, monitors to have the best performance. And 
you know, you already have this this widget on your desk. Will it work with softwares like Photoshop, where I can, you know, tune settings? Yes, at the moment, um, the color wheel, you can use it to do minor tweaks with Photoshop Work and Illustrator. Obviously, we're still uh, developing more software partners to, to be able to use more functions in different software. So please, please bring this to Premiere. Of course. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Kevin, last question. Let's say it's my birthday today. I have plenty of budget. And you know, money is not an issue. Which monitor should I get? It'll be the Vphonic Color Pro uh, 2786 4K. I think because of the 4K uh, resolution, it's all the best color gamut. Um, it will future-proof any of the content very forward. Is that the one with the light on the back? Yes, it's got the backlit um, as well. We call it the backstage light. So if you work in the dark room, then uh, you can have a, a bit of uh, ambient light. Just a little bit of... Yes, uh, uh, yeah, it doesn't affect like the, the, the alcohol thing. Kevin, thank you so much. This has been highly educating for me. Pleasure. Um, and I'm looking forward to see what you guys are, are gonna bring out next. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.